Alrighty, folks, looks like we have a fix for Thetis. We, regarding latency issues, I was listening to a couple blokes on 3610, I think it was, last weekend, and I was listening to what they were talking about. They were talking about latency on the Anon. Uh, now, I'm running a 200D. I have no idea what they're running, but they are running Thetis, I believe. And I'm running Thetis as one of the, op one of the uh, pieces of software connected to the 200. The other one is the MRXPS. I think it's 3.4.9 or whatever it is uh, from October of, or, jeez, uh, I don't know. It was, I know it's, it was released in 2018. It's the old version. This is in regards to Thetis. I've checked it on both, and then this is a substantial improvement in latency. Uh, I can actually monitor my audio in real time now uh, with very, very little perceptible latency. So I'm going to show you the changes I made, and I figured I'd put this out there. Now, the previous video I did on latency, the latency issues I was having, I think, 50% uh, of that was because the software was corrupt. So I uninstalled Thetis. So I'm just putting this out there. Mileage may vary. You know, I always say that. If you're having problems with late, horrific amounts of latency, which is what I was having, most likely it's a, it's a corrupt system. So what you want to do is you want to export your database first, and you want to reinstall Thetis, my recommendation is import your database to a separate folder, maybe a different drive, which is what I do, um, aside from the default folders that Thetis sets up upon install. And what that will do is it'll allow you to go and retrieve them and import them back in once you reinstall Thetis. So that's what I did. So what you're looking at is Thetis. This is the 2.8.11 release 2020. Uh, back in 2020 on October 20th. So first thing I wanted to show you is this is in regards to what the guys were talking about. They're talking about the ring buffer and the poor audio. So right here, now this, you're going to have to play with these numbers. I'm still not done playing with it. Um, but it seems to be working very, very well. And I'll show you some things you may need to change. And you will need to check it by monitoring up here, kick your monitor function on, on Thetis, and monitor your audio while in TX to check the latency as you make changes. Very important you do that. Don't take it for granted. So depending on what sound card you're running and your system, your computer and blah, 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 uh, I figured I'd just show you guys what I did. So before I had all these boxes unchecked and the buffer latency on the ring buffer was set to 120 and all of this was unchecked set at zero. Okay. Now I was running the buffer size at 64 and the latency is horrid. Now I am running on a 48 kilohertz sample rate. Make sure your sample rate is a sample rate that works. You're going to know if it works or it doesn't because you're not going to hear anything. And that's going to be in relation to the sound card you're using. Now this is all VAC. All right. This is not through the mic in. Uh, through an analog in to the front of the rig. I don't do that. So uh, everything's VAC on all my SDRs or sound card uh, direct. Uh, there are no analog cables going in and out of the Anon or the Sun. Okay, so back to the buffer. Uh, here's where my ring buffers are set at. Make sure the manual boxes are checked. Poor audio is set to three and three in, three out. Manual box is checked. Now I force this. The VAC1 monitor, I have this force to and force from. You'll notice that there are some overflows and underflows on each one to and from. Not too concerned about that. All right. Uh, and I'll tell you why, because it matters in what it sounds like. If it's showing up in the way it sounds, then I'll care. If it but I'm more concerned about the latency, especially when working DX pileups or if you work events or anything like that. So when you do this, the buffer size here will have an effect, most, most of the effect on 
what you see here in the VAC1 monitor. Uh, like if you notice I changed this to 64, you'll notice overflows already popped up at 1, underflows from VAC at 1. Okay, it's, it's very wonky in how this is working. I have not touched these numbers here. This is something I haven't gotten this far yet, but I'm just dealing with how to solve the latency issue, and you will solve it. It is very tight and very, very good. Um, so the first thing you want to check is once you have this set up, is you want to kick your monitor function on, hit the, uh, get your drive level down to zero, and go ahead and punch it and listen to your audio, make sure it sounds okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move this back to 256 because I noticed even though the latency was very good, the audio didn't sound quite right with a buffer size at 64. You may have to run, and I noticed there was no increase in latency by changing this number, by increasing the samples uh, on the buffer. Uh, you may need to go all the way out to 2048. I went from 64 to 256 with no noticeable uh, increase in latency, but it created a more stable environment on the VAC1 monitor as far as underflows and overflows go. Okay, the next thing is would be to uh, please understand uh, this is the problem I ran into. It kept resetting back to the way it was. This configuration right here is in direct relation to your transmit profiles. So I had to go back in and edit all of my profiles. I had to uh, go in, make the changes here on each one of my profiles, and then go back in and save and overwrite the existing profile so that if I change profiles or if I start the software, the ring buffer and poor audio and all these settings come back. Otherwise, it'll go back to whatever it was before default. Uh, once that is done, you can export the database and you are good to go. All right, so that's basically it in a nutshell. Uh, a lot of things to play with here, but they make an enormous difference. I can tell you that the latency, it's non-zero. In other words, all... It doesn't matter whether you perceive latency or not. It's still called non-zero when you're dealing with sound cards and stuff like that. There is some level of latency, even though it may be just a couple milliseconds to like, you know, 20, 30 milliseconds or something. But it's what your ear perceives. So when you punch the key and you talk into it, do you hear any delay in your voice? I can tell you that if it's there, it is extremely minimal. Um, I could actually use the monitor function now and talk in a normal cadence. <laughs> That's how little latency there is. Uh, I have not gone to work on the EE software or the Sun. I don't believe there's really any way to fix that uh, in the Sun that I've, I've come across. So as it stands right now, the Anon latency-wise uh, absolutely slaughters the Sun. Um, the Sun has a pretty decent amount of latency on it. I don't know what it would take to solve that in the electronic realm, in the digital realm. Aside from bringing an analog cable into one of the microphone inputs, which I am not going to do. So there you go, folks. Anybody with an Anon? Uh, this is well, I've had this well over a year and I'm still learning about it. All right, 7-3. That's it in a nutshell, folks. We'll catch you later. Have a great day. This is K1GMM Steve Vermont. Going sideways.